Hi, welcome to this episode of Herald Cafe. Today we've got a young farmer from Anjuna. This is Elijah D'Souza. Thank, Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank you for having it, me here. And it's great to see young farmers. What inspired you to become a farmer? Right from a very young age, I've always been <laughs> inspired by farming and I had a passion for farming. Mm -hmm. Seeing my dad and mom mm -hmm. uh, planting in the garden and you know, growing either f uh, vegetables, fruits, Mm. trees and you know just watching them <laughs> do all of that inspired me and in when I was studying in same Britos Mapsa mm. during the 8th standard uh, and 9th standard we had career talks going right. on in school okay so that's when uh, Miguel Virganza who was the very horticulture, okay, horticulturist yes. yeah he came he came to us into the school and gave us a talk on uh, mm. you know what are the scopes of agriculture in goa mm. and that's when he mentioned to us that you know soon there'll be an the goa's first agriculture college starting nice so from that time onwards mm. like i had it uh, fixed in my mind that f mm. i will go into agriculture from now on mm. so then uh, i did my 11 and 12 science mm. at sfx sholem mm. Then I, I applied for the interview. For the, uh, this, this, is a, this is a graduation course. The graduation. Three years course. Yes. Yeah. Four years course. Four years course. Yeah, bachelor's in agriculture. Basically. And uh, in that course, do you have some specialization? Uh, like a major subject that you need to take? No, 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 no. Okay. You, you take science and then okay. you answer the mm. test and then mm. you go for the interview. And that's it. And uh, and after that, uh, wh when did you graduate? In the year 2020. Okay, yeah, from yeah, then onwards you from are doing. Yeah, from then so onwards, I was in yeah. And uh, also, tell me about, uh, I was reading about you and like you were getting wet waste from the restaurants yeah. and using it. Tell me about uh, something about recycling or you know, like yeah. how you are doing it. So, wet waste is a major problem in Goa. Yes. Because since we are, the state is producing around 400 tons of it per day. Okay. And we don't, ha the state doesn't have facilities to, you know, to deal with so much of uh, capacity. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So there's got to be something where we need to help the state to kind of get, uh, reduce that amount of True. stress that they're taking mm. from all these restaurants. So that's when I thought about it, you know, mm. like some of the restaurants have really good food mm. and you get, like, they're, they're producing almost say 50 kilos a day. Mm. They're producing 70 kilos a mm. day. Mm. You can just use this. Somebody needs to just collect it, mm. and people have been doing it for s quite a while now. Mm. That you know, like some, some small farmers, they collect the waste from the from the restaurants and mm. they feed the animals. Okay. So I said, why not to mm. do, do that? So mm. I approached a few restaurants in Anjuna, mm. and then they were happy to get on board with uh, on board with me. Mm. And then every day now, for since then, almost two years now, that uh, mm. I've been collecting wet waste mm. every single day. So ad no. other otherwise, where would it have been gone to the so landfill? Like yeah, otherwise mm. uh, the panchayat comes in. Every okay, yeah, panchayat comes in. They mm. pick it up from them. Mm. But then, uh, since there's so much of waste, see, there's like I'm giving you an example of one restaurant produces almost say 40 kilos of waste per day. Right. Now you multiply that well. This thing 200 restaurants. Yeah, yeah, 200 right. restaurants. You're making up a huge that. amount of mm. uh, wet waste. Mm. So I'm just taking a part of it <laughs> back mm. to the farm and uh, feeding it to the, all the animals that I have. So mm -hmm. I, have, I have a piggery. Mm -hmm. There are stray cows, so I do not own the cows. They are stray cows, so that I feed them okay. the, uh, the waste. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. all clean waste, there's no mm -hmm. plastic, nothing, nothing mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's pure mm -hmm. food, waste, food waste, yeah, yeah. food waste, yeah. And it's not, it's not, be, it's not stale because I'm picking it up every, every mm -hmm. morning. So mm -hmm. it's not going stale or anything. So mm -hmm. it's still fresh and still can be, you know, it's not. Your yeah. your pigs should get fetch a good <laughs> price. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talking about Anjuna now, this uh, noise uh, noise pollution level, you know, people are coming to the police station and doing the protest and you know, again yeah. noise pollution and coming from that village itself, uh, seeing the tourism at such a close proximity, you know. There are taxis, there are hotels, there are Airbnbs and everything Correct. coming up. Yeah. Maybe your so many of your friends are into that tourism Correct. sector. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you never get uh, at, like attracted to get into that tourism sector. No, not <laughs> not really because uh, I I think plants and animals have always <laughs> got my heart. They are my mm. first preference if I wanted to work in anything. So always stuck <laughs> with them itself. On it. And uh, tell me about the uh, the young generation. How many of them has picked up agriculture? There are 
uh, people like uh, whom I know there are organizations in South Goa and like there are people yeah. who have the young parish uh, youth are coming up you know to be together in, in Anjuna there are, is a, are there is a group of people who are working together no not no, nothing is as of now nothing that I've heard of but yeah. uh, it should be you know something needs to be done because there's so much of fields out there mm -hmm. in Anjuna ba barren mm -hmm. fields mm -hmm. and all that can mm -hmm. have so much of potential mm -hmm. to start growing our own food mm -hmm. to start growing our own uh, vegetables even like chicken meat we yes. can all it we can be just self sustainable like that because uh, if you see what I what I did mm -hmm. was um, that I had this had a backyard in my backyard. I like all my th these pigs. Mm. Th th there are cows. There are shake cows. Chickens. Mm. There's so much that can be done. Sometimes feed is a problem. True. Feed is a big problem. But mm. then I solved that issue by you know helping restaurants or so mm. get rid of the waste and then feeding it to these animals. So you can create an ecosystem. You can create an ecosystem. I mean, the panchayats are really interested, and yeah, I would really wanted to g grab the attention of uh, panchayats in Goa. And uh, show them this model of what I'm working on. Like if one person can do it, I'm sure mm. with Panchayat, with the amount of funds that they have, mm. the amount of manpower that they can, they have, can do much more than me. Ten times more than I can do it. Like if I can re reduce, if I can recycle, say, 70 kgs of waste per day, for sure the Panchayat can do maybe 1,000 kgs of waste per day. And that will take care of a lot of households. They will take care of a lot of restaurants. True, why not? From sending their waste mm. to the landfills. And uh, instead, like, you know, they have, for sure they have land. Uh, the panchayats have land or some community have land. Mm. Use, uh, utilize that land, put uh, chickens, they put 100 chickens, you want to put 100 chickens, you want to put 30 pigs, you want to put cows and use all this waste and feed them nicely. Whatever remains, compost it in on the on the land itself. Land so, itself, yeah, yeah, so you're getting, you're getting rid of the waste. Mm. You're not sending it to landfills. You're, you're feeding your animals. You're getting income from them yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever remains their menu and all of that you can sell for, to farmers for fertilizers to different uh, hotels for their gardens if they want. Got it, yeah. Yeah. Are you are you talking to somebody like that? No, I need to. Yeah. <laughs> I need, yeah. need and to talk talking to about panchayat, what are the uh, government policies which are beneficial to uh, farmers like young farmers like you? Do you have a Kisan card? You know, no, no I don't have a Krishi card at the moment, but uh, looking forward, like you know. To getting one, so mm -hmm. then you know so subsidies that I can use that can help me out. Of course, with you know fencing a certain mm -hmm. land and this mm -hmm. and that, and then get into f into growing vegetables on a l larger scale than mm -hmm. what I'm currently doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go I think the government should should encourage you know and at least uh, make a way of the certain schemes that are involved, the certain uh, certain privileges that you can get, the certain subsidies True. that are available to True. different farmers. And uh, coming uh, apart from agriculture, you were also doing a pretty interesting subject of having a book library. Yeah. That also on, it's a mobile book library. It's, it's a mobile like book library. It's yeah. a cyc you cycle, yeah, cycle and, and deliver, deliver the books Correct, and pick yeah. it up also. Yeah. Where did that idea came from? That I idea came back a long time ago when mm -hmm. I was still in college, 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, I, started, uh, I started it with a friend of mine, Emmanuel Souza from Kalangut. Mm -hmm. So we were like s uh, good friends since school days and you know I always spoke to him about you know let's start a library, let's start mm -hmm. a library mm -hmm. and it always remained like that till uh, right up till college till you know we were like <laughs> doing our bachelors in different subjects mm. and then one day when I was traveling home from school from Sulkona which is almost 83 kilometers from Anjuna so I was a little bit bored in the bus and I said you know that to we uh, discussed once and let's start a library mm. well, let's do it one of these days so mm. he said yeah fine no problem we'll do it and then we just put up uh, back then i had like 300 books okay as part of the library collection mm -hmm. and we listed we made a pdf file of it mm -hmm. there's 300 mm -hmm. books listed mm -hmm. out with their names and authors mm -hmm. and then we made an instagram page and they started advertising mm -hmm. for it and it was 20 rupees mm -hmm. uh for a book mm -hmm. for a week that mm -hmm. time and then everybody in goa like all the youngsters college mm -hmm. crowd mm -hmm. old people and all of them they mm -hmm. all started hearing about this new library this new concept books delivered to your doorstep and then picked nice. up as well yeah mm -hmm. you save them a lot of things mm -hmm. like you know you save them time from yes. traveling to the library mm -hmm. then uh, book space the space mm -hmm. you know not many people have a lot of space so you know like whole, your whole library uh, shelf of books and you don't need anymore mm -hmm. So people started uh, ordering books online like non-stop non-stop mm -hmm. so every week when i come home like from uh, from the college mm. I used to have like a whole table full with you know orders to be uh, delivered and then some people I think 
ordered the book because they just wanted to make sure if you really came as Aikal or not. Yeah. Oh yeah, and to support yeah, you. To also. support, yeah, yeah. So then they were like really astonished when they see someone cycling from Anjuna to Panjim because most of our clientele is in Panjim. Can they go? You know, twenty-one so kilo. Yeah, you do that. I did that. Yeah. Are you still doing it? I still do it. Yeah. 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 So I was saying like twenty-one kilometers, twenty-five kilometers. How you do it and all. So mm. then now I'm also in endurance cycling. So okay. that's that's why I'm I'm in a, I'm able to mm. cycle that much. You know, because I find it very easy. My personal record is six hundred kilometers. I've done in thirty-nine hours, forty-five minutes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So twenty okay. kilometers is not a problem. Nice. Yeah. So we did and, that. And and of the three hundred books, I'm sure it has must be expanded. Yeah. We did. We are right now. Uh, we have three thousand five hundred books. Three thousand five hundred. Since twenty yeah, eighteen, we've kept yes. on growing the collection. And yeah, and getting it. And Alija, at this young age of twenty six, you know, I'm sure people getting inspired, as you say, that people. Are supporting you by taking the books from you. You know, people of course genuinely want to read the yeah. books also. That is one, and you are, I'm sure that your neighbors are looking up to you because you are doing agriculture, you are yeah. doing farming and stuff. Tell us more about your. You spoke to me about your inspiration. Tell us what would you like to show it like to people? You know, with your example. Correct. Yeah. So I think a lot of youth nowadays they can go should uh, should realize that uh, you know there is a lot of scope for mm -hmm. agriculture in the state, mm. and even now with, with the college before we didn't have an agriculture college now that we have an agriculture college mm -hmm. in Old Goa, so they should you know try to get um, get inspired to join uh, the college and there's a lot of there's a lot of demand as well now there's a lo lot of schools that are making it mandatory for having to have agriculture as a subject. There are okay. different, yeah. There are different other in preschools also need uh, want uh, teachers mm. in the in uh, agriculture. So right now I'm I'm teaching in a school called Play Early mm -hmm. in Porim. Mm. It's a preschool, mm. and I'm teaching um, kids of the age group of um, six to eight years old. So like that young age, okay. the, the that's when th you need to get them interested in certain subjects, you know, which mm. they which they might pick up, might not pick up. Mm. Even from the fifteen students that I'm if I'm teaching. Mm. If two of them pick up agriculture, be so much more better for yeah, the state. Yeah, because we are uh, definitely need uh, more agricultural produce because we're completely dependent. Correct, state, correct. You know? Yeah, completely dependent on other, on other states. And so with this, with this, uh, you know, uh, inspiring them from a young, very young age is the way forward. You know, some of them don't really know that you know th there are sc there are sc uh, scope in agriculture. You know, they mm. always think about engineering. They always mm. thinking about. Being a doctor, but mm. no, no parent. I think out there says you know, mm. need to be an agriculturist. So there is there is a field in this. They mm. need to be exposed to different mm. things. So what I did with these children is um, I've taken them to different farms. Okay. Yeah. In exposure trips. Yeah, 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 exposure trips, and you know, some of them getting inspired. You know, like to see cows, to mm. see plants, mm. to see where their pineapple comes from. You know, mm. how it grows. How does the pineapple grow? Got it. That that builds all that interest in them from a very young age. So I'm doing that with them. I'm also teaching these young children how to make bioenzyme from waste, like you mm. know, with citrus waste. Mm. So they're using it. They they make it. They you know I, I allow them to add all the ingredients, and then I I keep the bottle of bioenzyme in the classes, so they can see the 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 complete process how it changes from this to this. Okay. And then how mm. they can use the bioenzyme, like you know, mm. to to wash floors, to mm. you know, uh, clean the toilets and all mm. of that. And they can't uh, for them to think which is something was citrus peels. Mm few weeks ago is now something that we can use to the transformation yeah, to transformation that, yeah. yeah so that really in, uh, makes them interested mm. i also taught them how to like compost mm. using like a worm bin mm. an earthworm bin mm. so i just have like a three tire bucket system for them okay. in class in your in your farm in, 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 the school. in school in the school okay. yeah and every time like you know uh, i show them how to build the system with like using pieces of cardboard um, putting in some earthworms and some uh, cocoa peat mm -hmm. And then uh, these children, f because they on the lunch break they eat some, you know, um, fruits, and then there's some peels remaining and all. So they all add they it to, on yeah, they keep on adding it to the system, and then mm. they realize, you know, mm. after some days, the earthworms are eating it up, and mm. then they they they're getting wormy compost from it. And that same wormy compost, when they come to the for the next class, and we we harvest that wormy compost, and then we add it to the plants. So you know, they are understanding the whole cycle, True. and it's really making them interested into agriculture. You know, they wait for that <laughs> agriculture. <laughs> Uh, class to happen once a week, and they're like, you know, when I'm there, like they're all inspired now. <laughs> nice. So they should. Uh, many yeah. schools should adopt this. Many schools yes, should uh, course, yeah. 
encourage their students mm. to learn more about agriculture. Sometimes mm. it's just it's agriculture something else, and then these students are something. They, they keep the going. Yeah. Is they, there's no there's no connection anymore yeah. because life has become so fast. They're like you mm. know, parents are saying, "Oh, don't go in the mud. Don't play with this. Don't play with that." Mm. You know, they get scared of earthworms. Like mm. you know, suddenly like mm. before, like you know, people you used to see a lot of earthworms in the ground. Mm -hmm. They should, they should be familiar with things. Now suddenly they don't know what it is. They think it is a small baby snake or anything. So True. It, yeah. So it's, uh, it's inspiring to uh, teach the young kids. That is definitely one way forward. Correct. And uh, how, do, how do you keep yourself updated? You know, like do you read a lot about agriculture or new agricultural techniques? How people from different uh, regions of the world are tackling yeah. the issue? What, like so I think... A lot of learning also happens, you know, like after you <laughs> you finish study, actually finish studying the, ma the matter. Mm. And YouTube does help a lot, you know, anything you search on YouTube, like you want to start a new uh, vermicomposting uh, mm. unit, mm. there's a lot of videos on YouTube, you know, there's, uh, there's big size uh, units that are very small size units. You want to learn about new graphing techniques, something somebody has uploaded it on YouTube. So like whatever is there is <laughs> all on YouTube, you can learn for free. Mm -hmm. Like even I started a small aquaponics unit at home, okay. you know. And then uh, there and was growing vegetables. Yeah, growing yeah. Uh, growing vegetables, and uh, this was during the pandemic. So I, I did a small little course on it mm. um, in Goa itself. But the rest of what any sh uh, question that I had always you should just YouTube it and then it should show up. You know, it should come up, mm -hmm. and just learn from them for free. Like you know, you don't need to you know, enroll yourself for very expensive courses. Everything is there on the internet nowadays. Talking so about uh, getting information from YouTube. Do you also want to make a channel of yourself? I have, yeah, I have, yeah, I have, also <laughs> yeah. I have a small channel of my own. Yeah, and, and you yeah. put up agricultural, yeah, this yeah, videos? mostly, yeah, mostly okay. of agriculture, agricultural stuff, yeah, okay. on my YouTube channel, yeah. <laughs> it's it's great to see, uh, it's great to see young person like Alija doing agriculture, doing farming, as well as trying to increase the reading habit of yeah. people. Congratulations, Thank you. and I Thank hope you. more people <laughs> get inspired. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. I will see you again next week. Thank you. It was Alija, and I hope you check him up on Instagram for his book. Uh, the book. Tick. You call it book. The tick. book tick Goa. Yeah. The book tick Goa. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>